the Lord Jesus being an example of uh, uh, servant leadership, he mm, uh, does the act of humbling himself and then washing the feet of his disciples. Now, let's see further what happens. Okay, so now, um, once this was done, uh, uh, Jesus identifies the person who is going to betray him. We saw that Satan had already put it in Judas's heart to betray Jesus. Now, Jesus in verse 18, he says, I do not speak concerning all of you because he just now pointed out that, you know, one person is not clean. So who is that one person? Uh, he says, not concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He says, he who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Okay. Now, um, Again, you know, it is really uh, amazing how, um, you know, Jesus could could share bread with somebody he knew is going to betray him. Apparently, the sharing of bread was giving honor. Like if, if I break bread and if I, you know, give you that bread, uh, it would be that you are related to me in some way, a friend or a family member or a disciple or somebody, and I honor you. And Jesus has shared his bread with Judas, knowing that Judas is going to betray him. You know, in one way, it shows us of the incredible love that Jesus had for all his disciples. Even though he knew that one person is going to turn out so uh, you know, sour and that relationship is going to turn out uh, very differently. And yet, he had the courage to love. Okay. Uh, something amazing. Something now amazing. Now, of course, um, you know, the Lord Jesus, he is uh, doing what he needs to do. And, uh, you know, he is maintaining those, those boundaries with Judas, but at the same time, in his heart, he's not carrying any, any anger or bitterness against a betrayer even. And that is something very beautiful from which we can learn a lot. So Jesus identified him. And uh, in fact, he said that this person is going to lift up his heel against me. So again, you know, you have some of these uh, expressions that are that can be understood in their cultural context. So if lifting up a heel against one is to betray, okay, or, or to, uh, um, you know, go, go, uh, like, yeah, betray uh, someone. Okay. All right. So uh, Jesus kind of uh, lets everyone know that it is uh, actually Judas. Now, I don't know how many of the disciples actually got the point, but Judas himself would have understood that Jesus also knows that I'm going to do something against him. Okay. Uh, and uh, so uh, Jesus reveals that. Yeah. And uh, he continues to encourage them that they must believe in him. You know, he says things like, uh, mm, uh, most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. So uh, in the context of somebody betraying him, you know, he's continuing to say, yeah, there is somebody who's going to betray me. But, you know, I want to encourage all of you to uh, uh, accept me as the son of God and continue to walk with me. Okay, now, uh, it's obvious that when, you know, so many things are being revealed to the disciples, repeatedly he's telling them that he's going away. Uh, and all, they, they must have been confused. They must have been disturbed, you know, as to, oh, uh, uh, you know, what are these events that are going to take place in the coming days? Uh, Jesus is uh, uh, really, you know, talking as if uh, these things are going to be hard for us. And so they must have been confused. So Jesus being a good leader, he encourages them. Verse 21, he says, um, oh, wait a minute, that uh, encouragement comes a little later. Okay, he's still continuing to to reveal his uh, his uh, sorrow about the betrayer. Sorry, so Jesus was troubled in the spirit, uh, and he testified 
most assuredly i say to you uh, one of you will betray me so he still in his own um uh, you know uh, sort of distress uh, thinking that somebody he loves is going to betray him and at this point uh, you know peter asks he motions to a disciple who's leaning on jesus's bosom okay so in those days apparently they would sit quite close when they had the supper uh, and uh, 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 one of the disciples okay john does not mention the name of this disciple but uh, he he shows as if this disciple is very close to jesus the disciple whom jesus loved he uses this you know a couple of times and uh, uh, the uh, historians say that john was talking about himself okay he was talking about himself that he was the person whom jesus loved uh, you know and now i it doesn't seem like he's saying that he was loved among everybody uh, as if jesus loved him more than everybody but uh, i don't know why he is saying you know the disciple whom jesus loved the disciple whom jesus loved uh, maybe he he just wanted to reveal his love for for christ so um he just puts it this way and it's most likely john so peter asks john because you're so close to jesus you're resting on uh, you know bosom is like the embrace embrace of jesus you're resting so close to jesus so you ask him who is it okay lord who is it then jesus says you know i uh, i shall give a piece of bread when i have dipped it okay, that person okay that person is the one who is going to betray so after the piece of bread uh, and jesus dipped it and gave it to judas iscariot and as soon as he did that you know, we are told that satan entered him uh, it's it's really sad that a person had opened up himself to that extent that uh, you know the kingdom of darkness could rule and reign in him to betray the son of god can you imagine and uh, i think earlier i i told us that uh, uh 300 dinari he was making such a hue and cry for 300 dinari but you know later on we find out that for 30 cents he got how much money for uh, uh telling on jesus 30 cents okay and for 30 cents or 30 uh, sorry 30 silver coins i think uh he sold jesus he sold the savior of the world what is more expensive is you know 30 uh, silver coins more expensive or the savior of the world but look at his his deranged thinking he wants money he wants uh, why does he want money why does judas iscariot want money he was in charge of the treasury and uh, i don't know what happened to him why he is looking at the things that are passing away um and considering them as more precious than the savior the eternal savior of the world but something has happened to his thinking and here we are told that satan entered him okay so excuse me he had opened himself up to the uh, direction of the enemy okay and that's very dangerous uh, and uh, even for us that's why the word of god says every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of god you know we have to tear it down we have to pull it down not even one thought we must allow which is not in the mind of god because we have the mind of christ okay now judas had allowed himself to such an extent that you know uh, satan entered him and then jesus is not afraid of what judas is going to do jesus tells him whatever you what you do you do quickly he knew that he is going to go and tell the authorities where jesus is but jesus is not afraid because remember he is quite aware of the timing of his life so he knew the time has come i can't escape i have to go into it so what you do you do quickly so nobody uh, on the table knew for what reason jesus said this some thought that judas had the money box uh, and so jesus told him buy those things we need for the feast uh, or 
uh, that he should give something to the poor. You know, in interpreting this, some uh, people say that, you know, Jesus and his disciples, they did not have much money, but also looks like they were people who used to give to the poor. So in the amount of money which they had, they had a practice of giving to the poor. So that is why, uh, as a common understanding, the disciples are thinking, oh, Jesus is telling Judas something. Maybe Jesus is telling him to, uh, you know, prepare for the Passover feast. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Jesus is telling him to go and give money to the poor people, which we normally do. So uh, you see, even Jesus practiced giving, um, helping you know, the needy people. So we see that in the life of Jesus. So that is something to inspire us. Somebody who is in need, somebody who um, lacks, we can give to them. Now, uh, the uh, uh, also verse 30, you know, it says, having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately and it was night. So again, you know, some uh, commentaries, it says, can you think about uh, the mindset that Judas was in? Jesus just honored him you know, by giving him bread. So I told you, they would eat only with people with whom they had relationship. So Jesus is expressing his relationship. My disciple, you know, my my friend. Recently, Judas's feet also have been washed. After all that, it says he went out immediately. So some people say, oh, maybe he did not even finish chewing the bread and, you know, swallowing it up. But He's not able to see the worth of the Savior. He's thinking about the money. After experiencing the love of God, he's ready to go and betray, you know, so quickly. Uh, how can it, how can a person be like that? But, you know, we understand here that he had opened himself up to the strongholds of the enemy and the strongholds had taken over. So that's what happens, you know, when we don't deal with things quickly, you know, renewed mind that uh, we can let a lot of wrong thoughts uh, just, you know, linger around and form uh, these, these strongholds that something that is so simple to understand, he's not able to understand. Immediately, it says that he went in preparation of uh, getting Jesus caught. Okay, so um, how how uh, out of balance, you know, Judas's mind has become. All right, now let's see uh, what Jesus says. Okay, so now they have had this uh, supper and then they are talking and Jesus is, you know, sharing a couple of more things to prepare their hearts. He says, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. So you see in the relationship that he had with the father, he's saying he has lived a life to glorify God and God is faithful to glorify Christ because in Christ, God will be glorified. So, you know, it's this beautiful relationship that Jesus is sharing with the Father and the Father is sharing with Jesus. And, you know, they they are like working together, working together. And, uh, uh, you know, there is glorification of Jesus and also uh, through the life of Jesus glorifying of uh, the Father and more specifically about the cross. So that's why he says, glorify him immediately. Meaning, very soon, Jesus is going to die and he is going to glorify the Father. And then he says to the disciples, he says, little children, you know, he's expressing his love and affection. Remember, I said the bond that he had with the disciples, it was not just a working relationship, but it was deeper than that. So little children is a, is a, a you see, even John writes, when he writes his uh, epistles, he uses, you know, little children that way of talking. So teachers would use that for their students in, a, in, a, in an affectionate way. And Jesus knows that soon he's not going to be with the flock. So they might get confused. So in an affectionate way, he's telling little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You know, again, he's telling them, okay, get ready. Be mentally prepared. Little while longer. You will seek me. Or oh, you'll try to find me. Uh, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. 
so now i say to you a new commandment i give to you that you love one another as i have loved you and that you also love one another by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another so you see when somebody is going away okay and uh, for good they will generally uh, provide an instruction which is very important okay because they know that they are not going to be around after that so jesus says a new commandment i give to you what is this commandment okay jesus tell us quickly you're not going to be there for long what do you want us to do please tell us he says love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another by this uh, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another so jesus is giving them a key he says if you want the world to know you know that that uh, you are my disciples the same thing that he has been talking about so far he gave them an example right by washing their feet by uh, being affectionate to them by sharing his bread so he is demonstrating that love which he has for them and now he wants the disciples to love each other and he says this is the new commandment you know because earlier we know that um, jesus what is the greatest commandment you know when jesus is asked he says love god and love your neighbor right as yourself so this kind of sums up the law it sums up the law so he has lived that life of loving god and loving people and he wants once he's gone he wants his disciples obviously to love him but in addition to that he wants them to love one another so today when we testify to the world about um you know the love of god as christians and believers you know it is so sad actually when um uh, people have quarrels uh, disagreements uh, you know some form of uh, rivalry hatred towards one another i was just talking to somebody uh who had visited uh, you know one of our services and uh, that person you know doesn't come anymore but uh i was just talking to them and they were introducing themselves and the place where they are and you know they were saying oh there are a lot of churches in our uh, in our uh, um area but you know one thing is they are all so angry with each other and they all have issues with one another that uh, uh apparently two congregations they are thinking of uh, um you know putting a case on each other so that person was telling me i don't understand you know people talk about god's love but there are churches that are fighting there are churches that are fighting for property and churches that are fighting for uh you know some rights and they want to go to court uh, why why are christian people like this you know at that time i was uh, just thinking hey what did jesus tell us if the by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another so as believers you know if among ourselves we are fighting we are saying uh, oh i am uh, this denomination i believe in this doctrine you know i believe in i don't want to use any names but uh, just you know just like that this denomination or uh, you know uh, this ministry that ministry i i don't like other ministries we don't get along we fight with each other you know we have studied right in the course kingdom builders how we should have a kingdom mindset how we should love one another in despite our uh, you know the core things if we believe that yeah jesus is the son of god we are born again we are part of the kingdom of god you know uh, some of those those small issues which we have with one another you know we have to um kind of uh, not make a big deal about it and know how to walk with one another know how to honor one another and if all need to know that we are his disciples what did jesus ask us to do he said love one another and when he is going away 
he say a new commandment i give to you so is this important or not it is important the unity in the body of christ okay the uh, the the that camaraderie friendship in the body of christ is very important if we don't have that you know, we are not displaying christ to the world and that's what jesus told he said okay i want you to demonstrate the way i am demonstrating my love i want you to demonstrate it so love one another how the standard is very high as i have loved you and we can talk so much about the love of jesus you know sacrificial love forgiving love accepting love uh, steadfast love right we can talk about it so much so in that love with that love we are supposed to love each other okay let's move on so he is preparing their hearts he's telling them how they should live once he is gone uh, and now as he is repeatedly saying i'm going i'm going you no know, peter asks him uh, we said that you know everyone each um, disciple's personality is coming out you know uh, judas ha huh, what was his attitude what was his personality like we saw a little bit about it peter always jumping up you know quickly asking a question quickly making a statement no lord you can't wash my feet so you can understand that jesus is also dealing with people of all kinds okay and uh, peter is now saying lord where are you going jesus answered him where i am going you cannot follow me now but you shall follow me afterward so what was jesus saying you know jesus was talking about his death but maybe the disciples thought every time he's saying i will not be with you a little longer which city is he planning to go to he was in ephraim of uh, some time ago and then you know we we uh, uh, we were in other parts which one does he prefer where does he want to go so maybe peter thought he's going to another place another town so that's why he's asking where are you going but jesus is pointing out over here and he's saying that he's going to die okay and that's why he's telling peter you cannot follow me now peter you're not understanding i'm going to die you can't follow me now but he's saying but you shall follow me afterward so we know that peter was also martyred right peter was also killed so there will come a time when peter will be mentally prepared Okay, for what is going to happen to him, but not right now. So Jesus is telling him in a figurative, uh, in sort of a, uh, you know, like uh, it has deeper meaning. But uh, he's putting it in a plain way, and he's saying, "I'm where I'm going. You cannot follow me, but sometime later you will." So Peter says, "Lord, why can I not follow you now?" You know, he seems to be very. Uh, uh, you know confident in himself as if he knows all the answers he says no why can't i follow you now i will lay down my life for you for your sake you know it's like an um uh, you could say like an emotional statement i don't know whether he fully understood what jesus was saying jesus was saying i'm going to die can you die but he say i will lay down my life for your sake he say emotionally you know he say yeah i can jesus what are you talking about so jesus tells him no will you lay down your life for my sake most assuredly i say to you the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times so we know that uh, peter even though he made this grand declaration that i am ready to die for you jesus when the situation was tough when peter could have been you know singled out as a disciple of jesus and tried he got scared he denied christ in the most crucial moment and sometimes we wonder jesus why did you pick such people as your disciples you know uh, and jesus already knew this man who is saying he'll die for me three times he's going to deny and jesus tells him also i'm telling you before the rooster shall uh, you know the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times so you know what does this tell us it just tells us that god knows our weaknesses okay and even though he knows our weaknesses still he has called us 
So still he has given us a, a, a great destiny and a purpose. He does not discard us because of our weaknesses. Okay. Um, and it's really beautiful. And that's what Jesus was saying. Look, I have loved you like this. You love your brothers. You love one another the way I have loved you. I know who you are and still I love you. Okay. So that just shows us, you know, the, the kind of relationship that he shared with the disciples. So all of John chapter 13, we saw that. You know, he's really uh, showering his, his unconditional love upon the disciples. And you know, these are the people, right, who are with him through the thick and thin. Um, and these are the people whom he has prepared by the word of God. He has prepared uh, by, by uh, imparting the truth you know, into their hearts, not just for the time when he will be taken away, but even after he comes, you know, he rises from the dead and he again ascends, he knows these same weak 12 people you know, when they are baptized, of course, 11 people, when they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Remember in Acts, we, we saw uh, a person say that, oh, these people who have turned the world upside down, they have come here also. So these same weak individuals, by the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Jesus knew that they are going to be, uh, you know, they will make a great impact on the world. And so uh, Jesus didn't give up on them. Okay, He loved them. He prepared their hearts on what is to come. Now, he tells them in verse 14, verse 1, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So after uh, opening up to them and sharing so many things, you know, he doesn't want them to get confused. Instead, he's saying, you know, uh, don't let heart be troubled. Okay. In other words, he's saying, um, you know, situations around us can be challenging. But is it possible for our heart to have peace in that situation? Yes. You know, it is like people give this illustration when Jesus was on the boat and he was going to um, uh, rebuke the storm. Before that, what was the position that he had taken? Jesus was sleeping. Right? Sleeping in the storm. So, our heart can be in a place in the storm where it can be calm, it can be quiet, even though there is difficulty, even though there is trouble. So don't let your heart be troubled. So we can be going through many challenges, but is it possible to keep our heart calm at peace? Yes. And that's what Jesus was saying. Uh, and how to do this? He was saying, believe in God believe also in me. So as we're going through the storms of life, if we have faith, if we are anchored, trusting in the Lord, then you know our hearts can be strong. So that's what Jesus said. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Then he also encourages them by telling them the, you know, sometimes it's very encouraging to know what comes next. For example, you know, when we used to write the exams, uh, 10th standard, 12th standard board exams, you're studying for so many months, you know, I would always think, oh, wow, you know, if you write it well, then you can get a rank. If I get a rank, I'll go to a very good college. So you're thinking about what comes next. And that keeps us motivated. Okay, fine. Let me study. Let me study for two more hours. Let me study for three, three more hours. So we look ahead at the future. And God knows that. So God is encouraging these people who are going to be in distress very soon. He's saying, in my father's house are many mansions. So he's saying, you know what? In the future, that is when you come to heaven, let me tell you this secret. You know, in my father's house, and think about this, he's calling heaven as father's house. That is why today, you know, when people who are believing in the Lord, who are trusting in the Lord, they go, they, uh, uh, you know, uh, pass away. We don't, we don't generally for a Christian, we don't say he passed away. We don't use that term because that person, yes, physically, they are not there. But we know that we are going to see them again because their spirit lives on, right? And it is in heaven. It is in the presence of God. So we say, 
so and so has gone home to be with the lord we have a home in heaven okay what a reassurance and here jesus is saying in my father's house wow can you can you imagine that uh, if we can call you know the place where you live hey, my parents built this house my father's house jesus is calling heaven my father's house so it's just wonderful that he has authority in the kingdom he has authority in heaven and it is his father's house and he's encouraging the believers he's encouraging the disciples and he's saying look that my own place my father's house there are many mansions or he's saying there is a lot of room there are a lot of rooms for everyone uh, and if it were not so i would have told you but i go to prepare a place for you so all of this is just showering his affection on his disciples where he saying that uh, even in the future you know there is assurance right now everything looks shaky but i'm giving you an assured future disciples in my father's house there is enough space for you and you know whenever we invite somebody to our home Uh, it happens isn't it we try to at least minimum we just try to oh put this cushion in its place clean it up prepare prepare the place so and so is coming okay do we have uh, you know milk to make them a cup of tea there is a preparation because it shows your uh, affection for that person or your regard or your honor for who is coming look at this jesus saying i go to prepare a place for you so in other words he saying you are special disciples when you come like i want to to be ready i want your space to be ready so reassuring so encouraging for us to say that we have a future which is beyond our lifetime with god okay and he is inviting us in he say i already have enough place for all of you and i am going i'll prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself wow what a what a gesture of hospitality he will only come and receive us to himself uh, that where i am going there you may be also okay so what is our uh, encouragement when we think about heaven look at this verse second part it says where i am there you may be also so when we die Uh, as believers we are going to heaven not because heaven is this you know place where there is streets with gold that's exciting you know there is uh, pearly gates that's exciting there are uh, precious stones that's exciting all those things are very exciting there are angels there you know when we read about heaven so many things we understand oh it's going to be beautiful there is there are no tears in heaven and all the most exciting thing is what jesus is saying where i am there you may be also so what is going to make our hearts leap for joy heaven is where jesus is and we are most excited to meet jesus imagine you have the whole construction and you have all the angels singing but jesus is not there what is the use but where jesus is you know there we are going and that is what we a true believer a true disciple will be so happy to continue to be with jesus and that's the the joy that jesus is talking about and he's saying in the future you know i am going to make a place for you uh, there are there is a lot of place i will come and get you you know to go with me and we know this you know second coming obviously you know, jesus is going to come back and take us and then he says where i go you know and the way you know so he's saying heaven or my presence i'm going to take you with me so you know all these things are really uh, encouraging as we serve god you know sometimes when we are in challenging situations what does jesus say don't let your heart be troubled first thing okay put your trust in god put your trust in jesus and also think of all the joy that god has placed before us uh, you know for for us to enjoy now and in eternity and it really gives us perspective and we are able to get up again and say okay i know whatever i am going through it's temporary i'll be past this 
and i'm going to go uh, and uh, experience greater more eternal things and you know i'm so happy about it so we are able to uh, continue fighting now one more disciple speaks up so far we had peter doing the talking uh, so now thomas he says lord we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way again see all the disciples are thinking for oh, jesus is saying already there's no place to stay he's saying i have mansions for you which city is he talking about which town is he talking about father's house joseph does joseph has have uh, a big house we don't know so thomas is getting very confused okay remember thomas is committed to jesus earlier he said wherever you go we'll go we'll die with you jesus so this committed disciple he saying lord can you give us some clarity where are you going and how can we know the way now jesus you know in whatever jesus is saying it's like he is making a, a a logical statement but behind that logical statement there is spiritual truth there is deep revelation jesus says okay thomas you're asking how can you know the way you want to know the way let me tell you i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me so remember we said the claims of jesus where the pharisees were asking who are you who are you and jesus said i am that i am i am the light of the world you know jesus said uh, other places he said i am the bread of life i am the uh, you know uh, water i am this i am that i am the resurrection and the life he's already proclaimed okay who he is now he's adding to it he's saying i am the way i am the truth i am the life so he's saying i am the messiah you want to know how uh, you know what makes the way to go to this mansion and heaven and you know uh, be with the father through me and we see this preached a lot right that jesus is the only way and you know uh, it's also said that Uh, jesus said i am the way so it doesn't mean that you know he is one of the options or he's one of the uh, uh, people to put our faith in uh, that you know people say that all roads lead to rome so if you keep walking you'll reach the destination and the destination is the same but jesus refuted that and he said no all roads will not lead you to god only one road will lead you to god i am that road i am the way so if you want to go to the father thomas you go through me if you want to know the truth about who god is believe in me believe in what i am saying you know and i am the life also i am the source for you uh, and he says to as if this was not clear enough in addition to that he says no one comes to the father except through me it's like making it doubly doubly clear jesus says i told you i am the way that i am the road there is no other road okay so jesus is making it very clear that he is the messiah and he is letting the disciples know now let's continue he says if you had known me you would have known my father also and from now on you know him and have seen him so he is wanting the disciples to understand him for who he is now, their understanding is different okay at least it's not settled that we can very clearly see here but he's saying look you need to know me and if you know uh, uh you know if you have known me you would also know my father so look at all these honest disciples they start asking questions and that shows us that jesus had a uh, you know a really nice relationship with them that they didn't feel scared or they didn't feel ashamed but uh, whatever question they had in their hearts they put it across to jesus so philip he is asking them he is saying lord show us the father it is sufficient for us you know very spiritual philip he is saying okay god wow uh, you are talking so many big things you do this one thing for us you just show us the father you know that is enough for us so jesus you know he tells philip he says come on philip i was with you for so you know such a long time and now you're telling me show us the father okay what is this philip do you not believe that i am in the father 
and the father in me the words that i speak to you i do not speak on my own authority but the father who dwells in me does the works believe me that i am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves so jesus is saying in other words he's saying father and i are one okay father is in me i am in the father so whatever i am doing through my life it is out of the authority of the father and i am doing the works that the father is leading me to do so philip if you have seen me you have seen the father now how come you are asking show me the father remember in the book of hebrews we read this you know that jesus is the exact representation of god so if i want to know how is the father how is father god i have to look at the life of jesus because jesus is exactly how father thinks what father does you know uh, everything that the father does you will see jesus doing it so that is what jesus was telling philip philip don't worry you want to know the father if you know me you know the father and again that beautiful relationship i in him he in me in in okay it's not with it's in so so close so close and uh, deeply connected deeply connected that's the relationship of the godhead now let's continue verse 12 over there he says most assuredly i say to you he who believes in me the works that i do he will do also you see jesus is encouraging encouraging the disciples he's saying i talked about the father's works you know what you people will also do these works and let me tell you he adds to that he said he will do also and greater works than these he will do because i go to the to my father so he's going to now slowly start talking about the holy spirit and till now the holy spirit was not given to the disciples okay that you we need to understand because the disciples jesus is not yet died and risen from the dead it's only after that that you know uh the disciples at one point jesus will breathe on them and you know release the holy spirit on them and then later you know he will ask them to wait for the empowering of the holy spirit through the baptism in the holy spirit but these people had not yet experienced that isn't it so he is just trying to tell them about the holy spirit uh, and he says look you are going to do uh, these works that i have done i have just spoke about the father's works you are also going to do it and let me tell you you are going to do greater works because i go to my father so what happens when jesus goes to the father he'll tell now when i go to my father holy spirit will come and when holy spirit will come he will empower every believer okay and that is when we can expect greater works so what are greater works you know people ask that question uh, the the works that jesus did you know in this itself in the book of john we have seen miracles we have seen healings we have seen um deliverances okay uh, jesus said you will do these works even mark mark chapter 16 you shall lay hands on the sick they will recover you shall uh, you know cast out demons you shall um, cleanse the, so many things we are going to do that we understand but what is greater works you shall do greater works greater works would mean things that maybe in the lifetime of jesus uh, he did not seem to have done or at least it's not recorded those kind of works also we would be able to see through our ministry because who empowered jesus to do the miracles the holy spirit same way holy spirit when he comes upon us some unusual things now there are uh, people who say greater works means you know nowadays uh, you have something like uh, people put metal in the body if a bone is broken uh, metal is put in to attach in jesus's days they did not have such surgeries so you know seeing the metal turn into bone 
I don't think in Jesus' times he saw that happen. But today, there are people who testify that my metal was turned into bone. How can that be? You know, uh, or some, some things like that, that we see today. We could, people call those things as greater works. Okay, so maybe that, that's what Jesus meant. Some unusual things that are um, taking place today, which did not take place uh, during the ministry of Jesus. So us doing greater works does not make us greater. Okay, we are definitely not greater than uh, the Father or greater than Jesus. That cannot be. But some of these works can be classified as greater works. Okay, and uh, unusual miracles that take place. So can we expect these things to happen today? Yes, very much. And Jesus assured us. He said, yeah, you will also do uh, the works which I'm doing, Father's works. And let me tell you, he said, you shall do greater works than these because I go to my Father. Okay. And today I'll just cover the next couple of verses and, and stop there. And then he says, not only greater works, but you know, you will have a very powerful prayer life. So he says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So Jesus is also letting us know that you are also going to walk in a with a very effective and a powerful prayer life. So as believers today, you know, we, we can have the confidence. If I am a disciple of Jesus, I can have confidence. I will do the works Jesus did. I will do greater works. I will also have a very powerful, effective prayer life. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So the key is to ask. And ask how? Ask in the name of Jesus. Ask in the name of Jesus. You ask in my name because there is authority in the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus, what did he say? When he goes, when he ascends to heaven, he will do it for us. We have to ask in the name of Jesus. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now here, this anything, you know, you have to compare it with what has been told in other passages also. You know, we know that uh, we've been told that uh, whatever we ask in the will of God, he hears us. Okay. So this anything has to do with the will of God. If we ask anything according to the will of God, what did Jesus say? That is That will be an answered prayer. It will be a successful prayer. Or in other words, it will be an effective prayer. So we have a promise as disciples. Jesus is encouraging us. He's saying, look, don't be troubled. This is not the end. Okay. Think spiritually. Yes. I will not be here physically in the body, but when I go, I have many mansions. I have a lot of place. I'll prepare a place for you. I'll come and take you so that where I am, you also can be with me also. Let me tell you that you will do greater works. These works and greater works you're going to do. And also you're going to pray and you're going to get really blessed because you will see answers to prayer so uh, all of this you know jesus is basically he's sharing his heart and he's telling them all the important things that they need to do because very soon he's going to be um, crucified okay so we're out of time uh, i just request somebody to please pray and we will close for now quickly someone can you jump in and pray please so we can wrap up yes sir. Ah, yes kira Father God, we just come before once again your throne, Father God. Father God, thanking you for everything. Thanking you for the knowledge that ma'am ma'am share with us, Father God. Thanking you the servant heart, Father God, that the the, the work, Father God, that help us to understand that and apply it to in our journey, Father God. Father God, give that kind of heart, Father God, that uh, that we just gives it uh, on the heart, Father God. We have the example, Father God. We will do the uh, greater thing in Christ, Father God, help us to move forward, Father God. Thank you for the class. Thank you, ma'am, and all the students. Thank you, Father God, the knowledge, Father God. Thank you. Upcoming time, submitting to your hands, Father God. Take care of every side. Almighty Jesus, name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kiran, and thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.